everything that you guys said uh, about go like the the morning comes and it's about like maybe 10 a.m. Um, and the truck is reliably in the parking lot of uh, the gentleman's sip. Um, but it's not like Stan lives there, or it's not like Harrison no. lives there, so Harrison doesn't quite walk out of the bar to meet you, he just walks down the block, and it's just like, um, but yeah, no, so now you, you can, uh, talk about where you're gonna go. You wake me up yet? I'm yeah, I'll, I'll just head. knock on the truck. I believe it's time to go. You, uh, Stan, Stan, are you awake? <laughs> you the dog? You know, Stan? Don't take me alive! Oh no. <laughs> Don't take me alive! I'll make it. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop into the bar real quick to get him a, a whiskey to go. <laughs> a little uh, hair of the dog. <laughs> Alright, you, you go to the bar, it's completely empty, of course. Um, uh, you, I guess you have a key to get in if you're the last one that closed the night yeah. before. Um, because otherwise people just have to knock to get in and all that stuff. Uh, but you get, you get a, you get a whiskey, I guess. <laughs> and you bring, uh, it, you bring it out to the car. Uh, and then I'm gonna, is the window open? Is the window open, Stan? Yep, yep. I'm gonna, my foot, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my foot sticking out of it. I'm gonna try to waft the scent of the whiskey into your nostrils. <laughs> 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 it's like a Ah, <laughs> uh, here we go. Here he comes to stand. Hey, man, my man. It's just You're something that's going in the morning. You're beautiful. I take the whiskey. I put the whole put the whole thing into my mouth. I swish it. <laughs> spit it back in the glass. And just down it. <laughs> <laughs> Good for the teeth. Good for the teeth, Mouth. Harry. You know, just keep, keep. Mouthwash of champions, I hear. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right there, Harry. Just... Clears the gullet. Alrighty. Well, get, you might have to clean up a little bit. <laughs> bar, I feel like I just woke up after sleeping in a truck. Hey, yeah, it's because I did. <laughs> uh, yes, you can, uh, if you'd like to freshen up. Miss. Stop at my, uh, come on, come side and freshen up. That's my face. Change my shirt. Uh, one of my three, change from one of my three shirts I have. Put on, put on good old shirt number three. <laughs> Alright, well, you know, as long as your sink bath is done, perhaps we should head to the morgue. Yeah, hey, yeah, let's go. All right. Hey, then... Maybe one more to go. One more. Uh... <laughs> maybe, pick uh, me up. maybe Harrison drives to the bar. <laughs> no way. No, it's the no, no. 1920s. <laughs> so it's so the yeah. yeah. no. <laughs> All right. I don't know. It's a good question. Oh, I forgot that that should no, have been on the not. screen, but that's fine. I mean, there, there definitely wasn't a drink and a driving one. It's a good question. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you guys show up to the Boston Globe, which is an establishment that everybody knows about. It's like the number one newspaper in town. Um, it is a very big, ornate building. Uh, it's It's got like a regal aesthetic on the outside and everything. It's very long, old building. Uh, and this is where all the newspapers are written, and all the uh, people like Douglas Cuthbert work. And uh, you walk through the door, and there's um, there's a, an attendant at the front desk that's there to greet new people. And he goes, "Hello, how can I help you, people? Welcome to the Boston Globe, the number one most prestigious newspaper in town." Yeah, yeah, this, this is absolutely the best. You know, when I need something to wipe my ass, the first thing I reach for is a Boston Globe. Oh, I, that's not cool, you know? Yeah, but if yeah, you're using Occam, hey. I would recommend yeah. maybe the Occam Times for that kind of business, you know what I mean? <laughs> I see. Uh, I see. Hey, Harry, I like this guy. This guy's good, huh? Well, how I can I help so. you find gentlemen? A friend, Douglas, uh, told us that perhaps to uh, investigate the morgue about some uh, some articles he wrote. Douglas? Who the he, he kind of like looks around to see if any of any of his other co-workers are there to kind of help him with the situation but he doesn't seem to know who Douglas Cuthbert is he's like wait uh not exactly sure who this Douglas fellow you mentioned and you said something about seeing the morgue yes hold on one moment and he walks to uh, a back room is it for Cuthbert or Cuthbert or... <laughs> Cuthbert <laughs> oh, uh, he Cuthbert. walks to a back room for a moment and then he comes back out and he's like um, I just checked our, our manual for, uh, people, for working here, and, 
Uh, I unfortunately can't just let anybody into the morgue, you know? It's just, it's company policy. I, I'm sorry. Uh, is there anything else I can help you with? How about, uh, an old World War One vet? <laughs> oh, I, I'm Sem absolutely, the uh, country. I, I can't believe the, the amount of sacrifice and, <laughs> and uh, you've done so much for our country, but... You know how much sacrifice there's been? <laughs> Not enough you know how to much? get when I was in my morgue. When I was in my truck... <laughs> Let me tell you a story, son. Oh, no. <laughs> I was driving um, my truck. How about I, we do uh, our first roll for the night? Yeah. Okay. I'm just, I'm looking to see what maybe you should roll. I guess you're trying to convince him, right? I would, I would say so, yeah. Uh, maybe roll a persuade. So if you don't have any numbers in that, uh, you have to roll whatever the number is that it just says in the percentage. Uh, it says like 10% next to it, base, or something. So you just have to roll 10 or under. <laughs> On a d20? Uh, no, on a, on a percentage die. So, use a percent, oh, wow. or two d10s and a percentage, but just so long as you know which one is the per, uh, the 10 spot and which one is the 1 spot. Oh, okay, so I'll, I'll roll, I have to roll under a 10%? Yeah, it's gonna, you're gonna be, have a really hard time convincing this man that you, he should break company policy to let you in. Gosh, well, the, fir the, fir the first, the first number is gonna be, it's the double zero and a nine. So, yeah. you have nine. Yeah, so you just barely made it. But he, he <laughs> Wait, you up. Well, yeah, he tears up, and 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 he he's like he's he's so enamored with your story, and then he just goes, "You've been through so much, but I can't let you into the morgue. <laughs> 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 it's it's my job, you see, and I, I I this is the first job I've had in so long. You, it's so bad out there getting a job being an attendant. You know, I can't let you into the morgue. I'm so sorry. Did, did you find anything out about this, Douglas? Douglas, this yeah. I still don't know who you're talking about. He doesn't sound familiar to me. Like, he, uh, there's so many people who work here, though. So you could just be making up a name, or like, because I don't that, know you. I don't that, know well, you. I, you don't. You don't. You're my friend Stan here, the Vorbet. But you have like a company, uh, a company directory or something. Uh, uh he he uh he says one moment and he walks back into the back room for a moment, uh, and then he comes back out and this time he's followed by a woman. Uh, her name is... Let's see. Ruth. Ruth Blake. And she just comes up to you and she's like, I am so sorry, you guys. Uh, Douglas is one of our old co-workers. He doesn't work here anymore. And he started working well after... What was this guy's name, actually? I don't think I ever said it. Artie Wilmot? He, he started... He, he left long before Artie started working here. So I'm so sorry about that. Anyone can get into the morgue. I don't know what this guy is talking about. Let me take you to the morgue. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then Artie, Artie sitting in the back room crying because he, he failed to help somebody. <laughs> so he's, you can actually hear him, like, wailing. It's a little extreme. <laughs> but, um, uh, but... Hey, really, hey, Artie, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, Artie. <laughs> can I help you? <laughs> Apparently you can't. To the morgue. <laughs> Fuck up, son. <laughs> You're free. I'm free. <laughs> You're free. I'm free. And then Ruth, uh, Ruth accompanies you all. She opens this door that's locked. Uh, that's basically right behind the uh, the the little uh, attendance booth. Um, and she unlocks it. And there's actually a blurb here I can read about this. Uh, where is it? Okay. You are taken down some steps by Ruth Blake, the records keeper, into a dusty basement filled with uh, filing cabinets and stacked high with old newspapers and other assorted junk. The whole room smells musty and the boiler system in the corner gives out a lot of heat. Um, so now she leads you to, uh, there's just rows and rows of just old articles and, and drawers of, of things that they've written that they've just thrown out or like, it's, it's all stuff that, um... Like, Douglas didn't do a great job of explaining what exactly it is. The the morgue is all articles they wrote, but they never published. So, uh, and, and actually, let's say she's explaining this to you. She's like, so this is, um, this room is full of the things that we wrote, but then our editor decided we're not worthy of printing in the news for one reason or another. Um, and if you got, uh, I'm, is there something specific you guys are looking for, or, uh, what was it that you came here for exactly? Uh, um, and, and, oh, you, you go ahead. You t you tell him, uh, Harry. My my friend here is uh is interested in the Corbett House. Some more oh. information. Oh, Corbett House. Yeah, we uh we have a few articles about Corbett House. That place has quite the history, as I'm sure you've heard. 
Um, so she leads you to a drawer, um, uh, and she she opens the drawer and she pulls out how many articles does she have here? She pulls out uh, one handout. Um, and let me read this really quick just to make sure I I think I just read this to you. Okay, yeah, I could just read this to you. Uh, I just wanted to make sure it was. So she pulls out an article and she hands it to you. Uh, which one of you wants to read this? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, you well, hear me? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there you right. Oh, did you hear any of that? I, I heard she pulled out an article. You, and you're I about to read us something. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, um, so she pulls out an article and she hands it to you. And the article says, uh, she's like, this was unpublished. We, we, did, not, we did not air this uh, in the newspaper. Um, but the article says... Uh, it's Boston Globe, 1918, a feature story which was never published. It states that in 1880, a family of French immigrants moved into the house but fled after a series of violent accidents, left the parents dead and three children crippled. The house long stood vacant. In 1909, another family moved in and immediately fell prey to an illness. In 1914, the oldest brother went mad and killed himself with a kitchen knife, and the heartbroken family moved out. And then in 1918, a third family, the Marcarios, which is the family that, uh, I can't remember who mentioned them to you, um, rented the house, but they left almost immediately under mysterious circumstances. And Ruth, uh, she, um, she stands there and she goes, um, she's like looking around, uh, seeing if there's anything else in there while you guys are reading this. Um, so I guess you could guys could talk about what you just figured out, uh, while she's kind of looking. I mean, just... Couple problems in the past. What was what it? What is it like? Nineteen twenty, so like forty years. I mean, come on. The last one was in nineteen eighteen, <laughs> two years ago. I mean, <laughs> oh, that long. I mean, yeah, I mean. Well, that's, that's, I mean, it's just a couple of sick kids. I mean, people get sick every day. It's not just a house. I mean, I can go down the street, and if I looked up the history of some other house, there'd be kids sick in there too. You know. So long as I'm not living there, but I would love to check it out. Absolutely. Uh, uh, what, are you, what, are you, what are you fishing for there, Harry? You, li you like the spooks? You think you're going to see a ghost? Come I'm on. curious. I'm curious. I mean, quite a sorted history here. Ain't no Dracula's living in this house. Uh, she, uh, so Ruth, um, after looking through a bunch of files, says, I can't seem to find anything in our globe files that mentions anything about the Corbett house uh, further than 1878. Uh, I think that's when, I think there might have been a fire there or something, but that appears to be the furthest back our records go. Did you guys find what you were looking for? Or... I got some prices. Didn't find too much, no like mob activity or nothing in there, you know? Oh, it's oh fine. no, no, just spooky stuff, you know, though, right? Super I mean, spooky. Yeah. Just Smith for sure. Spooky stuff everywhere, people are hit outside by cars, they don't say that street's haunted when someone gets hit by a car. I mean... It, it, Ruth seems to believe in the mythos a little bit or something like that, but she's like, I mean, there's some ghost stories probably, right? <laughs> um, anyway, anyway, if you gentlemen are done, I can ask Maybe uh, I'm, I'm renting out the place there. I may, maybe you want to come by sometime and you know, maybe I'll give you the, the personal paranormal tour. What do you think, huh? Uh, um, maybe? As long as you can <laughs> prove to me that I won't die when I go there, you know? <laughs> Uh, I'll, oh, I'll protect you. Times, don't, times. don't you worry. Yeah, <laughs> maybe what we can. It, uh... what, what does Ruth look like? <laughs> what does it? What does she look like? Uh, she's not. Uh, um, okay, she sounds attractive. Is, yeah, she's. Uh, she sounds attractive, she's, but she's not. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> but she's not. Um, uh, if I had to imagine her in my head, off the top of my head, she looks like Quistus from Final Fantasy. Yeah, oh, one hundred percent my Chris type. Is, yeah. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> yeah, the, man, you know, maybe you can give me your, uh, their telephones, right? Yeah, what am I talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I'll get your number, man. I mean, I know where you work, but I don't want to be a creep coming to your, your work all the time. And uh, once I get cleaned up a little bit, I'll look for, for ghosts and uh, I'll make sure if there are any, you know, none of them are dangerous. You still get a chance to get a little spook, you know? Well, as long you as think? you can, as long as uh, you can take me on a safe trip through your house and you've perfectly expected it and you've lived there for more than the Marcarios have which was 
of like a month, then <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll let you give me a call. You know, but I'm. Oh uh, yeah, well maybe we'll maybe we'll start with dinner. And make sure you know I'm not that I'm not dangerous or nothing. You know. Just, yeah, that shoot. would also be very helpful. <laughs> I didn't, all right, all right, yeah. I didn't think about that until now, but yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah, anyway, I can, uh, I'll right. ask going Have you ever ridden, you've probably never ridden a truck before, I mean, I got a truck. I mean, my husband second. has a truck, so I, <laughs> I mean, trucks are pretty rare in this time and age, uh, I mean, your husband's got a truck, huh? All right. <laughs> all right. So uh, she yeah, well, takes you. Uh, maybe. Um, yeah. She she uh, escorts you both out of the Boston Globe, um, and uh, you guys are now at the the outside of the Boston Globe, so you can discuss uh, what you could would a, like to do now. Could have wingman me a little bit there, Harry. I mean, come on. How are you We're doing so well? <laughs> <laughs> no, and fighting into the house we haven't been to yet was a, was a bold start. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Girls <laughs> like a little, you know, if they like a little spooky, I give them a little spooky. If they like a little, you know, something else, give them something else, you know, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, yeah, I, I play a lot of different roles here, Harry. A lot of different roles. Did you, um, yeah. did you guys want, like, a refresher on, the on like, kind of some of your options at the moment? Well, I mean, we can go to the library. That's, yeah, and that's one else? of the options, too. Um... Uh, but yeah, no, I can, uh, but yeah, if you guys want to talk about where you maybe want to go next. Or I can also let you know, uh, options that are available to you as well. What do you think, Harry? What are we doing? Uh, about what time is it right now? Uh, you probably weren't there very long, maybe an hour to an hour and a half top, so it's probably about noon. I say perhaps hit one more place before we, uh, check the place out if we're trying to go before it's dark. Where do you want to go, honey? Well, Your uh, chariot awaits. <laughs> I'll put the truck, <laughs> truck door for him. Uh, well, uh, French immigrants live there, I believe. Perhaps depending on where the house came from, where it was built. The origins might be useful. I mean, you know, like, what French immigrants we're going to talk to? Or, I mean... No, no, I mean, like, like the library. Perhaps they have some sort of record of something. Oh, wow, well, wait. Who would have records of, uh, of sort of houses built? Anyone in town? You're like City Hall uh, or something? I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a Hall of Records, which is not the library. There's also the library uh, would probably have information like that. Um, there is also, you, you saw like that there was a lot of like reports about the place. So the police might also have information. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, those are, those are some of the options. And then you can also just go to the house. Uh, there's nothing really preventing you from going there immediately. <laughs> well, I say, uh, I mean, let's not go to the police or nothing. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't smell quite as fresh as I usually do, you know what I mean? And yeah, I don't you don't see Al Capone going to the police and asking for help or nothing like that. So, uh, okay, maybe. Well, that's, I'm sorry, what? Al Capone? I what, mean, what uh, <laughs> Al, 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 Al Jabone, he's a good buddy of mine, he's another, another bootlegger, <laughs> and, uh, you don't see Al Jabone going around, yeah, well, let's go, uh, I mean, let's, let's see how it was built, I mean, architecture is cool, you know, maybe I could knock out a few walls, open the place up, if there's some cool plants or something, <laughs> <laughs> a nice breakfast nook, perhaps? Uh, but man, yeah, yeah, whatever that is. Yeah, sure. I meant like, I meant like, carve out a chunk of wall and store booze in it and hide it so cops don't find it. But I sure. like that. <laughs> already thinking two steps ahead. Yeah, I mean, sure. Bro. Yeah, I mean that's what I have for breakfast. Sure, <laughs> more like a pantry. So, uh, uh, which, uh, where would you guys like to go then? I think the library has some sort of records of it. Otherwise, I was gonna, I was gonna say Hall of Rec Hall of Records. Hall of Records, sure. Okay, okay. So you get to the Hall of Records, and there's an old, old woman uh, that just is sitting at the the front entrance. She's like, "Hello, how can I help you, fine boys?" <laughs> she does not sound as attractive as the. <laughs> she looks like the globe. Every girl in this game looks like Quistus from Final Fantasy. <laughs> well, she's a wrinkly old Quistus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that whip's a little little saggy. Uh, <laughs> uh, can I help you, fine boys? Oh. Uh, Take away, a, Harry. It's all you. Is there, is there someone with a slightly less grating voice we can talk? No, I'm so uh, sorry. If anything, um, they only get worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very. 
Unfortunate, but um, we're looking for yeah, maybe you want like a glass of water or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would uh, love a glass of water. <laughs> we have about go get course. her a glass of water. <laughs> uh, we're looking for some information about the Corbett House, uh, some sort of records about how it was built, when it was built. Corbett House? Did you say yes. Corbett House? I did indeed. Oh my, that place has quite the history. Oh, You'll notice gosh. everyone starts the thing with that. <laughs> uh, we have heard, yes. Okay, I can see what I can dig up on Corbett House. Wait just a minute. Three hours. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, she she kind of waddles, <laughs> takes her bit, uh, but she kind of waddles over to uh, the back, like behind a door, because. Basically, all this building is, it's an older building, there's like two giant lions on the outside, statue lions, um, and it's its just like a government building, but essentially when you walk in, there's just a, a counter, uh, and then there's a door behind the counter, but that's all that's available to the people that just visit the place. Um, so she walks into the door, um, and she takes a moment, and she comes back out. I, I You wanted to know stuff about how the place was built? Uh, yes, we did. Okay, well, I couldn't find anything about that, but I did find this weird little tidbit that I don't think I've even read. Let me read it to you, and she <laughs> oh. just... Oh, no, I think... <laughs> don't, I'll, I'll, I'll take it out of her head. Don't okay, yeah. more, 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 more. <laughs> this more of a, I was really a hoping you were going to do that. <laughs> Miss, kind Miss, of a visual not, learner here. Do, yeah. do not shove yourself, and I will hold it up between me and, uh, me and Stan. What does it All say? Right. Um, so let me let me read this really quick just to make sure that I can read all of this to you and nothing secret. It's on an ancient Indian burial ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the way you cleanse it is. And you bury pets there. Okay. <laughs> so um, this is a civil court record. Uh, it's quite old. Um, and it says the civil court records show that the executor of Walter Corbett's will was Reverend Michael Thomas a pastor of the Chapel of Contemplation and Church of Our Lord Granter of Secrets. Uh, the Register of Churches notes that the closure of the Chapel of Contemplation uh, was in 1912. Yeah, that church is weird! Yeah? I... Yeah. This is where the church used to be. Is that what it said, or uh, no? It's it it's just saying the that of it. Corbett, uh, Corbett, when he made his will, that one that was very controversial, that included being buried in his basement, went to a guy from this one church. So the church mm. is not like it's not like it was built on the the church's thing. The church might actually still be around, um, but it, it's just it's abandoned now, and they don't they don't practice there anymore. Uh, do you have the address of his Mr. Thomas, perhaps? Mr. Thomas? Oh, I think he's long just gone. I don't think he's dead, actually. It's 1912, so he's probably <laughs> fine. Um, but I don't have an address for him, but I, if you would like, I can look up this church that it mentioned. Nah, there's an address, absolutely. Sure, I love yeah. being helpful, and she waddles <laughs> to the back. Uh, and she takes a couple minutes, maybe 20 minutes, and she comes back with another piece of paper. She's like, yeah, I found, I found something about this church! That's very kind. I'll take the piece of paper from her. <laughs> just immediately. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me let me just double check this really quick. Uh, okay. So it does mention that the church is in town. Um, it, it's, it, it's built fairly close to the, uh, Corbett place, but, uh, like, not, not close enough that there's any, like, weird association with the two. Um, but it, it's probably why he made that his local church. Um, and, uh, it says... It says that there were actions taken in 1912, however, the records are not present here. And, uh, the yeah. clerk, she goes... You guys are so nice. Uh, this is all I could really provide about the church, but if you would like to know more about this weird church, um, you could always go to... Where does it say? The co the coming... The, the police station might know. Or maybe you could actually see this church, because it's not far from here. Huh? Can we have the address then? What do you mean by yeah? Let's get the address. Yeah. So she she 
Well, the address is listed on one of the pieces of paper, so she hands you a piece of paper uh, and a pencil to write it down. Alright, uh, write it down. Is there anything else? No, you've help? been most uh, you've been most helpful. You fine gentleman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she she goes, "Thank you so much for your patronage. It's very lonely here. I'm learning. Nobody God. comes to the oh. <laughs> she oh says, God. Now God. I'm here talking to myself. <laughs> and the camera slowly zooms out to show how lonely she is. 